あの時間帯は通勤嫌だ何やらでちょっと狭しいだから俺は運転席に座ってスピード違反を見合ってる When they showed the play here,、uh, she said, I'm from Washington. She said, I worked in the Pentagon. The plane that hit the Pentagon hit the front window of her office. And this is where the、uh, rescuers have found her. And when she's in the hospital, she discovers that all 80 of her co workers, or 70, were killed. She was the only survivor. Now, number one, survivor guilt, everything that went PTSD, everything that went with this. And she said for, for 15 years, she sat in her house, curtains drawn,、uh, lying on the couch, crying half the time. Her life was totally ruined. And then she said,、uh, her daughter came to her and said, Mom, there's a play called Come From Away. And、uh, survivors of the Pentagon, they want, they're giving you free tickets to go. And she said, No, I'm not going. How could someone be so cruel? And then her daughter said, Mom, this is about 9 12, not 9 11. So she said, I went. And as you can see, I'm here in Gander. She said, I've seen the play nine times. She said, I got to experience the worst of humanity. Now I get to experience the best. And I just, she just blew me away with that one. At St. Paul's, they're all from England. And they were all on their way to Florida,、uh, to Disney World. And I was totally shocked. Now, I seen the kids there. I just didn't. The six young girls, all six, I'm saying, that were terminal, they're all young girls. They all wanted to go to Disney World to have a fairy tale princess style birthday. We wanted to have a birthday party, but we were turned down. And I said, Now, why in the Jesus were you turned down? And they didn't want to single out six. And I said, I tell you what we're going to do. I said, we're not going to have a birthday party for six. We're going to have、uh, a birthday party for 400. That's the passengers and the volunteers. So that was done. And our local Canadian tire store donated all the birthday gifts, other stores donated the food and the drink. And our local co op store again stepped up unbelievably. And of course, they made a cake. I'm about to leave. And there's this big fellow, and he's standing in the doorway. He's looking like this. And he looks at me and he goes, So I walk over and I say, Yes, sir. And he said, I have a message for you to give to everybody here. And I said, All right, then, what is it? And he said, The message is, It's okay. My daughter, it's her birthday today, and she is terminal. And they've just sat us down and told us that we are not going on to Disney World. We have to go back to London, Port of Origin. And he said, We sat her down and we asked her what she thought of this. And her comment was, It's okay. I've had such a good time here. I have been treated so good here that it's okay. It just, I just couldn't. I mean, it was, it was just something. And, you know, it was dear to my heart. Just amazing to me. I mean, it just made me so proud of Canada in general and more specifically, you know, people associated with Ander and the surrounding communities. And, you know, we did have some passengers who 
didn't want to leave. They wanted to stay in Gander and even some of those were on my airplane, but I, I didn't have a complete awareness of why that was. And the reason was because they were treated so beautifully and they felt so insulated from the tragic event that had gone on in our country. You know, so I was clueless. So seeing it for the first time was uh, a bit overwhelming, but it also made me so proud. Gave me a better appreciation for everything that was done during that time. <laughs> Totally chronicles my aviation life, totally. I didn't even know the song had been written until I saw it come from away in La Jolla. I didn't even know about the song. And I'm listening to it going, oh my gosh, that is my whole aviation career in four minutes and 19 seconds. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing song. But yes, it's all true, yeah. Oh, it was just a few days. I want to say I got home on Saturday the 15th and I flew that following Thursday and I couldn't wait. A lot of people can't understand why I didn't have concern or fears about getting back in the airplane, but I felt the complete opposite. I was never going to let the event ruined what I love so much. And I'm still flying today. I fly a small jet. I'm getting ready to be 72 years old and I'm still flying jets. So obviously I still love it. The first buses arrived after midnight at Gander Academy. And on the morning of September 12th, we had 770 people sleeping in our school. From four different flights, from all over the world, every age, every color. Sometimes I speak English and French, so translating, we had passengers from Belgium who spoke French. We had passengers from Africa who spoke French. I got to listen to a lady make her phone call home. We didn't have cell phones. We couldn't turn on the internet and follow online to see what was happening. So I did that all night. I, I mostly stayed in the office for four days. I organized a bulletin board for each flight. Everybody stepped up. Everybody was there. The teachers, the substitute teachers, very tired teachers, their spouses, some of their kids, the older kids came and helped. And everybody fell into a job and everybody did a really good job at what they were doing. So just, we took care of the passengers, but we took care of each other too. And I think that it was an incredible team building experience to realize that we had done that. And when they started singing the opening number, number and they got to the refrain of uh, I am an Islander and started singing and dancing, everyone in the arena went on their feet, standing ovation. This was Gander. We see people coming to Newfoundland on holidays just because they saw the musical. Some of the people I've met are survivors from the attacks. Some of the people I've met are family members of people who were lost. And that this musical, this true story, um, can give them some kind of healing from such a terrible thing, I think is really special. <laughs> 